Okay, I am, I've not, not done this before and don't really have a setup, but hopefully this will work. So if you I can all see what's in front of me. Oh, so many years ago, in fact, it was 1990, I took a class to make a vegetable garden. Oh, I have to okay, sorry. Okay, I have to okay the recording or I couldn't see. So it's a little vegetable garden in a wash tub. And there are tomatoes, carrots, green onions, and head of lettuce. Um, one thing I wanted to say kind of out of sequence, at the time, not that I had taken that, but a good 10 years ago, I had put a whole bunch of FEMO through my pasta machine. So I have very thin sheets. And at the time I was planning to do a bunch of projects, never got to them, but I put it away between layers of wax paper and then slipped it in a Ziploc bag. And this has been a good 10 years and this stuff is still usable. It's still pliable. It's still, you know, everything you need it to be. So I would not have believed that that would work, but hey. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that, that we did, I'm just gonna go through kind of briefly how we made these various vegetables. Um, I'm not gonna actually make any as we go, but I will show you some of the component parts, et cetera. So the first thing we did was to take some, um, that lightweight foam, either the florist foam or some kind that is um, soft enough that you can like make an indentation in it, took the wash tub, turned it upside down into the foam and pressed down until you could cut all the way through. And that made the basis for everything to get planted, if you will, in the garden. Uh, if it had to be trimmed, it was. It was then some glue put on the bottom of the wash tub, the foam pressed down into it. Then the top was covered with glue. I don't know if you can even see the dirt through the vegetables. Maybe better on this one. I have two of them. Um, and then dirt, whatever you like to use for dirt, sprinkled over the glue, let it dry, shake it off, add more if you have to. Imagine most of you have worked with, with dirt before. I like coffee grounds for my dirt. Um, I just, I take it, I spread it on the tray and roast it in the oven to make sure there's no little living critters or anything else I don't want in there. But it makes really good coffee grounds and lasts a long time. Okay, I'm gonna leave these where you can see them. So the first thing we worked on were the tomatoes. And we used wire. I'm, I'm going to try showing you the picture of this. Let's see if that will, yeah, that works pretty, uh -oh. pretty well. Um, so then more little pieces were. So when you were done, you actually looked like you had a little tree. And then you take and spread all the pieces of wire out so that you had all these little branches that you will then attach your, your fruit, your tomatoes to. Um, for that, we used wire that had been painted green or if you have the green covered florist wire, you can use it as it is. We then did leaves, which we used um, a punch um, pretty sure we used a punch. The other thing you could do if you have one of those um, things that look like you make cookies with, I just went blank on the name of it. Cookie cutter. <laughs> Kemper, uh, Kemper tool, right. And you have the leaf shaped design, then you can press out like a tube of leaves and you can slice them into individual leaves. 
So um, those are the leaves. I think we made, what did we say we made here? A lot. <laughs> Somewhere I had notes. Um, 45 of them. Um, and you can do them different sizes because again, you're going to have younger leaves and older leaves on a tomato plant. Then we did just little round balls about the size of uh, smaller than a green pea. And I don't know if you can even see this, this is gonna be hard. Yeah, made a little cross uh, with any kind of tool, you know, the edge of something uh, because that's how tomatoes look. And then the stem attaches in the middle of that X. Uh, we made red tomatoes, large and kind of medium size. We made green tomatoes that were, here's a, you can get idea, a little bit smaller, uh, all the way down to teeny little brand new baby green tomatoes. Um, for a FEMO, we used green, the light green plus some translucent FEMO mixed in. And the red, I believe we also used some translucent just to give it that, I don't know, a little more vibrant look to it. And then you plant the wire, which you've already done, uh, by putting some glue on the end and just pressing it down into the foam, let it dry. Then we also did, I don't know if you can see the stick, um, uh, wasn't a toothpick, it was like the part of a swab, one of the long swabs like they give you now for COVID testing. Um, one of those cut off because tomatoes are usually staked up to a, a thing. And glue your various tomatoes on, put your leaves around them, and then some twine, uh, meaning sewing thread in this case, to tie it up to the, the stick. You can see there where it was tied. So that was how we did tomatoes. Carrots, we just rolled a little cylinder. Let's see if you can see it better that way. And carrots usually have some markings on them. So you take a, a sharp thing and just make little lines around it because they're not perfectly smooth and then a hole in the top. And then they were baked um, at this point in the FEMO. Then after they'd been baked, and I was gonna say, I think all of these were baked at 275 degrees in a toaster oven for about 15 minutes. Then a little piece of that green wire was stuck in the top and a little bit of the landscape. I'm trying to see the best angle to put that at to make the little fluffy leaves that are on top of a carrot. You didn't need a point because these are gonna be planted. So again, some glue on the end and then they were just pressed down into the, the dirt and there are your carrots planted. The one I loved was the lettuce. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a lettuce or a cabbage looking at it, but whichever. Um, we started with a ball of green on the end of a toothpick. And size-wise, about the size of a green pea, like a canned pea. And then the leaves uh, were done, some in the darker, green, some in the lighter, some kind of mixed. And they were just cut out into that kind of shape. You can see that. Then veins put into it again with your little tool. Um, one of the ones that works well for that, if you have a stylus with a fairly small ball on the end, 
or any other kind of tool. And then the ends were, I'm not sure how to describe it, kind of ruffled um, by taking a pointed object and kind of doing that to the ends and then some little holes. And then the leaves were applied one by one to the ball. Now the first, th this one has already been baked, so I can't actually bend it over. But the first ones bend almost all the way around the ball. So they kind of meet in the middle. See if I can get a good. Yeah. Yeah, can you see the, the ones meeting in the middle? And then I used a little bit darker green for the outer ones and those kind of stand out and flare. And then this all gets baked. Then we just cut off the end of the toothpick that we've been using basically as a tool to hold it. And the end of that toothpick gets planted. So you've got your, your lettuce. And then the last thing we did were green onions. And I actually don't have a sample one, but I'll show you a picture. As I find them. So basically just long triangular pieces of green female. And two of them put together and wrapped with another a piece of white. And then once those have been um, kind of wrapped together. The ends are bent down a little bit. I can show you the, the ends are bent over and baked and then also planted. And that's how we did it. This was actually a class with a woman named Vicki Metzger who dropped out of miniatures and disappeared from the earth. Uh, few years after she taught this. So I, I have no idea where she is now or what. I'm going to look back around. Anybody have any questions or comments or? Okay. Hey, I love, I love the little container that your garden was in. I think that's so little cool. wash basins. Yeah, I think yeah. you can still find those around. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that was a clever idea. And I've actually got some things out on my screen porch. They're not wash basins, but they're just tubs that I actually have some real plants in because we have deer everywhere around here and they consider our vegetable garden breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Ah. So yeah. The only way we've been able to grow anything these days is to put them on the porch and hope for the best because they don't get as much light as they would like. But we're getting yeah, a few more tomatoes. Meal Okay, if nobody else has questions or comments, Marsha, move on. Oh. Marsha? What are you waiting for her? I, I use tea leaves Shirley. for my soil. And you're and muted. I make the tea first and then dry them. I'm Ikey. I'm not wasting anything that I could use. For <laughs> yeah, I've done it with tea also, Rusty, but the coffee grounds work really well as well. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of depends if you're a tea drinker or coffee drinker. Yeah, that's right. I was only joking. But uh, many a true word spoken in jest. I would also paint it brown before I sprinkled them, but that way you got yourself doubly covered. I use tea le leaves, dried tea leaves, because I yeah. drink iced tea, not coffee. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I don't drink coffee either, but my husband does and generates uh, a lot of coffee. Oh, grounds. you can spend his coffee. That's all I right. I just steal his. Yeah, no yeah. problem. <laughs> uh, Sharita, mm -hmm. do you have anything to add about your, your uh, lunch and learn on the 30th? I think it is. No, it, it, the, I think, I don't know if anybody has made it, but I think it's pretty quick. 
to do. So just have your tools. If you want to do it, you know, follow along and do it alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, what, I mean, how can I say like the tools? <laughs> I mean, how can I say it on there? For there before beforehand. Uh, is there special tools you want people to bring or, you know, have or use? Uh, you can post it. Okay, just on the groups, on yeah. the uh, name group? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll do that. Let me write it down. I mean, you can even just do it in an, an email message to mm -hmm. both groups, yeah. MCC and right. name, if you want to. Um, you right. Know. Okay. And then, of course, the people who have purchased them, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. OK, Shirley. OK, I have uh, quite a few things. Um, some of it I didn't make. My friend Shar did. So um, I'll start with her little cabbage. And oh, wow. Uh, she just kind of didn't cover it, uh, the ball that she started with, but just kind of brought the layers up there. She did it in red and white or green. The red one, she, she left the ball so that you could see it. And her fancy little tool for making uh, lettuce, she looked at uh, different jewelry that she had so here's a package that she's got some sort of a, a finding. It looks like a scallop. And then the other one looks like a, a shell. And that's mm -hmm. how you'll get your uh, lines in it. And then she has these beads that also have the shell pattern. And you just press your clay on that. Mm -hmm. And these, they've got a nice little uh, serrated edge. So you can kind of pull your uh, clay over that and have a, a, a raggy edge on your clay. Are those sponge or plastic? These, these are plastic, these beads. Okay. So that, that's how you would shape your individual leaves. And then she has a whole bag that's loose. And she was going to make a veggie tray. So she would just take some of these leaves and put them on there. And you can see how she's got the raggy edge on some of them. There's a large one and a small one. And then you just put that on your plate and put your veggies on it. Wow. She's got some yellow in with the green and then some more yellow with the green to get it variegated. I don't think she put any translucent in this. And then for myself, um, I started out with a little paper plate. I made a little uh, palm tree on there because I was making a dessert. And I have a sliced banana with star fruit. Oh. I just used uh, brown pa uh, paint for the chocolate sauce on there and dotted the star fruit with it. And you really can't see it, but I cut some uh, what do you call that paper that's translucent? Uh, tracing paper. <laughs> tracing paper is what I have. I cut it super, super fine and put it on there. I don't think you can really see it, um, but there's okay. coconut sprinkled on there too. Okay. Sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> uh -huh. And then I made um, caramel apples. And those are pretty simple. Uh, these happen to have a bead. And I don't, don't ask me where I got the stick. I must have made these 15 years ago. But there's a little teensy weensy thin stick in there. You could also stiffen a piece of um, like button and carpet thread and press it down in there. And I mixed, uh, I'm not sure what the color is, but it's kind of a caramely color uh, brown paint. Mix that with some glue, just regular tacky, and smear that over your apple. And then I just rolled it in white poppy seeds. So oh, that's wow. the, the caramel and the, the nuts. Oh, okay. 
And then I, we all remember the, the jars that we used to get at the dollar store with nail stuff. Yeah. And I uh, canned some peaches and put resin in there. And I learned a different way of making the cap on this. You punch out a circle of your heavy, heavy duty tin foil, not just regular tin foil. And then, or not tin foil. Um, oh, that foil Reynolds, tape that they use on- Reynolds uh, wrap? What? Reynolds wrap? No, it wasn't, Reynolds, wasn't Reynolds wrap. It was that tin foil uh, that they use uh, the tape on uh, furnace ducts. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Yeah, it's sticky on one side. So you punch out a quarter inch circle and put that on the top. And then you take a strip about maybe an eighth of an inch wide and pull it through pliers and it'll make grooves. And then you put that around the edge. Oh. You have a jar with, with um, you know, the old fashioned looking uh, screw top. Are you talking about duct tape? No. It's, it's furnace duct tape, but it's shiny aluminum. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not. I think the technical term is aluminum tape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you can pick it up. Um, I got some at uh, Harbor Freight years ago, and I got these neat little plastic dishes. I think they were they were something for a, a watch. I got these at um, oh, I can't think of the name of the place now. Scrap box. And they just get all kinds of stuff in there that's like industrial waste and stuff. So I made a green bean casserole, just used green um, and, and rolled it out super, super thin and cut it up into the beans. And then I mixed uh, glue with some white and a tiny, tiny touch of uh, like a brown, a, a light tan color brown for your mushroom soup and poured that over it. So this one is when the meal is over with and you got all the leftovers <laughs> and then this one is full. <laughs> and then I, I used a brown uh, Fimo for the, uh, what do you call that, the onion rings? But it, it, this one is really too dark. It's too dark of a brown. So I'm gonna have to try and put some light on there with paint. And then I have two projects behind me. We did this one years ago uh, downstate as a club project. And let me see wh which way we're going. So I've got hanging plants with plants in it, some uh, a, a cart with flowers that I can take off, uh, some gift bags, uh, baskets made up with different uh, fruits in them. Uh, so they have a banana and an orange and an apple. Oh, cute. The grapes are not made with Fimo. Those are made with those glass no hole beads. And once again, I just mix paint with some glue and then take a piece of uh, cloth covered wire and stick it into a lump of it to, to make a, a, a bunch of grapes. And wrong way. Over on that side, you can see the grapes over in the, the corner of the shelf. Yeah. Uh, all the coloring on the bananas is just done with paint. The pears, I used a, a brownish uh, tone uh, eyeshadow, but don't use it if it's got mica in it. You want flat colors. And we've got green apples and red apples and oranges and lemons. How did you do the coloring on your watermelons? That is actually all clay. Um, I made the shape and then I put a thin stripe of the lighter green on it. And then I just used a pin and kind of flattened it out, rubbed ah. it and then took the edge of the pin and pulled. So that's how it got kind of funky looking. Yeah, nice and, right. yeah. great job. Great. The uh, musk melons, I roll those on uh, uh, what do you call sandpaper. Oh, <laughs> OK. Get Great idea. Texture. Yeah. And then I have one more project here. Is that from a cereal box? Uh, no, it's a um, 
Mandarin orange box. <laughs> oh, okay. And then with the kids, we made a Halloween scene. Yeah. You can call it Halloween or fall. So we made several different kinds of um, gourds. You just mix your yellows and greens and and then uh, mix some yellow with the, the colors. Now I've got old Fimo, so they, the colors are different. But yeah. you just have to kind of mix until you get the right colors in, adding yellow to orange or, you know, uh, I put a little bit of orange on the, the uh, acorn squash there to highlight them and a bag full of apples. And there's a couple of my uh, uh, caramel apples. And instead of a scarecrow, we have a, a little pumpkin person. Mm -hmm. And Cute. my uh, apples, the cheating way of making the water, you cut a disc out of a clamshell package and then punch some holes in it with <coughs> a, a hole punch. And then you can glue the apples so that they're kind of going down into the hole. Uh, so so that's, yeah, that's another wash tub. Yeah. <laughs> they have lots of uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that one at Hobby Lobby years ago. But. Uh, it was just, you know, another, uh, I wanted the, the scarecrow, but I put a pumpkin head on it and then made a couple of leaves with the, the vine squigglies. And the, her fans are just uh, sh uh, paper that's cut into fine strips. And that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, you know what? I lied to you. I didn't punch holes in this. I cut the apples in half and glued it on top and on bottom. Oh, uh, <laughs> clever. Something else, something else I, I punched holes, but cut your apple in half and glue half on the bottom of the uh, plastic and then half, half on top. Clever. Yep. See Shirley, okay, um, and a comment about the lettuce looking really good. Um, Julia. Hi, Bob. All right, so um, as uh, Shirley was talking, I remembered I had made these pumpkins when I first started um, miniatures I was trying different things so this was back in 2019 and so I made little clay pumpkins it was one of the first things I made I just did orange clay did round um like a ball squished it and I think I got a toothpick and just um put the side in and curved it around so that it, it did the um, dips. And then I got a little brown piece of clay and rounded it and then flattened it out on top of it, squished it together and there was pumpkins. <laughs> so real, real simple, but mm -hmm. it, uh, it was one of my first things of doing, uh, doing the pumpkins or doing clay, so. That's pretty much the only uh, foray into making um, vegetables or anything, but uh, it was fun while I was doing it. <laughs> right. So that's all I got. Mm -hmm. Barbara Bauer. Well, I've got um, a um, some things I, I bought. I'll show you first. This is a banana that's been peeled. You have to put I it by your face. I don't particularly like working with FEMO, but I like buying the fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And this one is from um, uh, Ruth Stewart, an orange that's being oh, peeled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love her stuff. Um, but um, 
I did make, I think this was a workshop with Sid Wagner. We did beats. Huh? And then we had two in a little basket. Mm -hmm. That's cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> Always have cat hair. <laughs> And I also did another canning scene with her that, because uh, I made the green beans, that's easy to make and I've made them quite a lot. But um, we had a whole another thing and I couldn't find that today. I was looking for it, but- um, Is that a basic red or is it a mixture of reds or- it, I think it's probably a mixture because it looks so dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would guess there's some purple mixed in there yeah. or something. And then, of course, that it's just... Um, Bemo red is really dark like that. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I don't remember. It was This was years there. ago Did that when she still lived in, um, I think, Illinois or Wisconsin, wherever she lived. Before Wisconsin. she moved. Yeah, before she moved to uh, North Carolina. But um, the other canning we did... Um, uh, a pot that we put, I don't remember, uh, maybe we put carrots in there. And that was just rolled out and then cut them and put them in the water and probably green beans. I'm not sure exactly, but um, that's what we, I I enjoy doing it in the class, but I don't particularly like doing it on my own. So I don't usually do a whole lot of, oh, I have something from a, the Indianapolis family reunion. Whoops. The watermelon that we got as a, a souvenir. Oh, yeah. I forgot I had those. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. So that's uh, our local club worked on veggies and fruits, fruits and vegetables. And I bought one of each of a whole bunch of you know different fruits and vegetables to have as samples for people to copy with with the demo and all. Um, Sharita, hello. Okay, let me see if I. Okay, I got figs and lettuce, and the figs. So this is a large one, so you just could keep reducing. Just keep in mind that when you're reducing, you squeezing and pulling, squeezing and pulling until you get it down to the scale that you want. But this was, this is the, the like if you want fig slices. Mm -hmm. And then for the lettuce, I have this, it's by Angie Scar. It's the uh, lettuce press. And so you got these two and look at the nice detail. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, Very nice. And I'm going to take this off so I can switch my camera and show you some lettuce. So did the kit come with the leaves like that? It's just, this is, this is silicone. This, oh. this is silicone rubber. Okay. And so you just smash the clay between the two because, you know, one is the front and one uh, top and one is the bottom. So it's like a mold then. Right. It's a mold. So oh, those are nice the, leaves. Yeah. I wish I'd had one of those. That's really That's neat. beautiful. Yeah. The lettuce made with it. And you can get it. It's so thin, real thin. You just want to mix until you get to the color of lettuce, the Beautiful. greens and the yellows until you get to, but it's, it's, it's real thin, almost translucent, like, le like lettuce. Oops. Get a peach. Yeah. Like yeah. That's neat. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So then if you, like uh, you did a scene with, um, a tray or something and you want the lettuce underneath as a de decoration and then put your uh, meats or whatever on top of it. So when you want to put it in there to shape it and then bake it so that when you want to glue it in, it's going to be, you know, right to right. put in meats and all of that in. 
but I love doing the lettuce because it's so it's it's real thin when you do it, and it just comes out so nice. Do you have any idea if those silicone molds are still available anywhere? They should be, but I, like I said, I, I just a, I just start. looked, and they are on her site. I just oh. looked, yeah. though they are so still this there. Is what and it is, and she has a couple different ones, but this is the leaf veiner number one. But she has a couple different ones. What's the last it's, name? Angie. What? Scar. Scar. R R O S C S C A R R is that right? Yes. Yeah. The the one that Sharita is showing you is five dollars and fifty cents. And that's they're all five. Yeah, and there's two. There's the the one's the cabbage veiner, and one's the leaf veiner. So they're a little bit different. You know, cabbage is different. So one is for cabbage, one is for lettuce. But she's got all kinds of molds, guys. Wow. Is she on Etsy? <laughs> on Etsy? No, she, her, no, her thing is angiescar.com. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, she had, I, I just love them because this one is real fine, the lettuce one. <laughs> so the cabbage wouldn't be as fine as the lettuce. So depends on what you want to do. That's it. I lied to you guys. She's got more than those two leaf lettuce ones. I've just found three more. So oh my four God. more. So there's a bunch of them out. in here. Yeah, there's a bunch in here. So <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say goodbye, everybody. Oh, okay, Elaine. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye. Thank you, Elaine. Bye. 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 Uh, <laughs> If Sharita's done, I had some Angie Scar, some, I buy a lot of her stuff for salads and things, because a lot of times it's quicker to use them and, and right. instead of make them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, uh, uh, Susan Skinner has something and then oh, we'll go sorry. to you, Kathy. Oh, I was just going to talk about something from Angie, fine. Well, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You're muted. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, she's got some other stuff to show too. Uh, Susan, and I don't know where you are. You're probably on page two. Ah, there you are. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I can figure out how to turn my camera around. <laughs> so um, I will just try to hold my camera because I'm on my phone right now. So I have a basket of apples here. If I can find it. That I made. And um, these I just made out of Fimo and then I dry brush the color on afterwards okay. with paint. So the one is before and the, <laughs> the in the basket is after. Um, I did, they're all the same. I just took one out of the basket. Okay. Can't, I'm sorry, my camera, I can't get my camera to work sideways like this. That's okay. It, it's showing. <laughs> so they're, they're just made out of, um, kind of a yellowy tra um, and transparent. And then um, the black, just the brown stems are really, really thin Fimo pressed into them. And then after they were cooked, um, <laughs> then I dry brush them with acrylic paint. Okay. Mm. Yeah, look good. So that's it. Are they one inch? Those are one inch, yes. Yeah, they must be. All right, Kathy Price. <clears throat> and now I've got to find you. Okay, where'd you go? <clears throat> we got quite a few people on here. 
Uh, 30, 31. 31 now. <clears throat> Gabby, where are you? Mm -hmm. Say something. She was muted. Did she get bumped off? I don't think she might have. That happens a lot. Yeah, I don't see her. And I can't find her at all. Mm, and I, I know, know she has quite a bit of fruits and vegetables. Uh, yeah, I don't see her either. Yeah, she must have got bumped off. Right. I'm well, going to have to wish you good night, girls. And thank you very much. I've enjoyed that. Thank you for your company. Good night, right. Rusty. Rusty. Good night. Take care, Rusty. Rusty. Have a good night. Bye. -bye. Thank you, dear. While we're waiting, would uh, would you like to see what how I store all my foods? Sure. Yeah. 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 I, I got these. They're the uh, thin. Um, what do you call? Like scrapbook boxes or scrapbook paper, and I make paper dividers in them. As you can see, I, I fold it over. That's out, just out of poster board. And then each row, I have little dividers in there so that I can go down alphabetically and find apples and beans and carrots. Wow. <laughs> so, and this this one's just all fruits and veggies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want to overload you guys with everything I got. <laughs> <laughs> But and, you like to make food, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when I was uh, putting the lines in my pumpkin, I just used the back of my X-Acto knife. Mm -hmm. It's very thin. And uh, just you know, press carefully with it. OK, any other tips about tools or hints about colors or anything mm -hmm. not FEMO for vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits. Yeah, the best thing to do with fruits and veggies is have one in front of you so you can try and mix the color to match it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we had a fun time with all the fruits and vegetables that were on the table for people to use as Models. Or I go to the grocery store and take lots of pictures. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but cameras don't always get the color right. Oh, I do on my I get on my regular phone. I do. Uh -huh. You do get good pictures. Good. On the phone. Yeah. Never thought of going to the grocery store and taking a picture of an apple. Well, I take pictures everywhere, everywhere. I mean, and no, <laughs> nobody, no manager, nobody ever stopped me. Like in the all the garden nurseries, Lowe's, everywhere. I go to regular nurseries, take pictures, hundreds, hundreds of pictures. Nobody ever stopped me and told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> My funkiest experience, I went to uh in one of the richer neighborhoods of the Detroit suburbs and was with my tape measure to measure a um, craftsman chair. And <laughs> a lady came out to ask me what I was doing, if she could help me. And I said, well, I'm making one of these in miniature and I need to get dimensions. She went and got me the catalog and gave me the catalog. Oh. <laughs> okay, was that Kathy that came back on? Somebody came on. Susan? Kathy, are you there? Nope. Susan, it. Who's Susan BG? It. BG, yeah. It just says BG, it doesn't have a name. What? Yeah. What? Um, no. Yeah. Am I sure to it up? Okay, now. You have three sections. Wait, you have. Well, we used to have uh, thirty-one. There's only twenty-nine now. So right, but there was twenty-eight, and one came in, this and one, I. And well, yes. no, the next one. Yeah, this one kind of came out farther. There were smaller stitches. But Rusty left, and so did Elaine. So that was two. So yeah. yeah. Right. 
uh, Kathy got kicked off and she's not coming back. Oh, oh. darn. Oh, I wish she could get her internet. Yeah. Because I know she has a bunch of fruits and vegetables. She was just going to show you some uh, onions from um, Angie's scar where you could make them look like onion rings or something. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, so that's a site to check out is in the car, especially for the molds and, then, and stuff. And then you have the last yeah. sections that this is the last yeah, section. There's a, so there's a ton on the Angie Scar site. I've That's been scrolling in. What's it called? AngieScar.com. Scar, S-C-A-R-R. S-C-A-R-R. Thank you. Oh, I thought it was star. No, no scar. scar. SC. Here, here's some of our onions. Oh, 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 uh, hey, Sharita. These are the white and the red onions. Oh, wow. Really? Stop touching your red. I'm muting or something. I'm not even touching. I guess you did. I've seen someone, I on, don't remember where on Etsy, it. but they made some fantastic, what? like bacon and uh, vegetables and a whole bunch of stuff that oh, were sliced really thin and worked well. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll put the meat rolls out in the garage. Okay, now who came in? <laughs> <laughs> I heard the, the sound. Okay, if there's nothing else on fruits and veggies, I will stop the recording. Maybe I'll just pause it. Okay, Carol. Okay, um, many years ago, uh, my group of friends and I made this um, this rooftop garden house. I think it was by Pam Junk. And get this turned around here now. Um, it was in the nutshell news. Oh. And I don't know where to get it so you can see it. Up a little ways it or the camera down a little ways if possible. Yeah, camera down. No, so I can't see what I'm doing here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Camera down. We're looking at the above it. There, oh, there, 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 there. There. So one side is the vegetable and the other side is the flower garden. Uh huh. Can you make it out at all? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun to make. And I made all the. Um, flowers and uh, vegetables by hand. Wow. Well, well, getting them very small. So what scale is that? This is quarter scale. Oh, wow. And I forget yeah. the year that this was in the uh, nutshell news, but we had to make it all by hand from her instructions. Uh -huh. And it covered um, several issues. Very nice. On it today. It, it's um, Ruth Stewart's, uh, this is quarter inch. Yeah. Her little, I'm not sure what it was called. Cupcake. Sweet uh, shop. Like the sweet shop, I think. Yeah, yeah sweet shop, a cupcake or something. Um, was it hard to do? Because I've looked at that many times. I'm so tired. Um, not really. It took me, I didn't get it done that day. But um, uh, you have a mold for the cupcakes uh, and a mold for the, the, this is the lollipop here on top. Yeah. And you have a mold for that. Um, and for the little dots on the furniture, you just yeah. use the 
Was it a toothpick we used? Just a little dot all, all over. Did you take it as a class or did you just have yes. it as a class? I think I took it at um, one of the in Annapolis house um, party. Really nice. And um, it was fun. The hard part was getting the plastic over this yeah. piece here. Yeah. That was the hardest part, I think, was doing that. Mm -hmm. So, but I found it today and I thought, well, maybe I should show it because I, I didn't make everything on here, so. <laughs> Looks wonderful. And I have a question. I mm -hmm. bought these containers. It's too big. I actually went online and got a glass one that's smaller. But I can't figure out how to get it open. Oh, <laughs> I have to. I think it pulls apart this way. Like, yeah, you got to grab them just right. It, yeah, it, 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 here's, two U shapes together. Here's the back. Yeah, it's two U-shaped, so put put your hands over. Yeah, oh, one so U-shaped like this. And I, one. Kind of, I can kind of feel it now, and yeah. And then whenever, if that doesn't work, there, there you go. go. There I got it open. Are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I had one of those too. It was hard to figure out. Yeah, I found the instructions. It's in the February 2002 uh, Dollhouse Miniatures. Oh, mm. Dollhouse Miniatures. Yeah, and uh, it's by Pam Junk, and it's called House Under the Garden. And I think it goes for four issues. Oh, wow. <laughs> 